Shipping today is one of the cleanest and safest forms of transport. Every day, the global fleet carries billions of tons of cargo across millions of miles of ocean without accidents or incidents. Since the 1950s, the global rules covering safety at sea have been made by the International Maritime Organization, IMO, and more specifically by its Maritime Safety Committee, which held its 100th meeting in 2018. IMO safety standards for shipping are continually changing and improving, providing a safer workplace for seafarers, and this helps protect the environment too. So how have the IMO and its Maritime Safety Committee made a real difference? Everyone is familiar with traffic regulations and ships have their own rules of the road too. In 1972, IMO adapted international regulations to prevent collisions at sea, known as the coal rigs. IMO also regulates the extensive equipment fitted on a ship's bridge to help it navigate safely to avoid collisions and running aground. There's a special chapter in the Safety of Life at Sea Convention, SOLAS, detailing requirements for radar, GPS, depth sounders, electronic charts and many others. It's regularly updated and amended by the Maritime Safety Committee to ensure ships continually benefit from the latest technology. When ships come into or leave ports, they often engage the services of a marine pilot with local knowledge of the channels and the tides to help the ship navigate safely into or out of open waters. This key aspect of maritime safety is regulated by the MSC with the provision of shore-based vessel traffic services, also setting international rules for physical navigation aids like buoys and channel markers. And if a government wants to establish or change a ship routing channel, it does that through the MSC too. The MSC has developed comprehensive operational safety rules for specific ship types and cargoes. For example, in 1972, the International Convention for Safe Containers was adopted with a range of other measures dedicated to safe packing, weighing and stowage of containers. Carrying dangerous goods is strictly regulated by the mandatory International Maritime Dangerous Goods Code. This code sets details how to pack, stow and segregate hundreds of individual substances and materials. The International Maritime Solid Bulk Cargoes Code was adopted in 2008 and there are other measures covering loading and unloading and how to carry grain safely. Almost every aspect of tanker operation is subject to MSC regulations. New international standards for passenger ships were adopted in 2006 to enable a passenger ship's safe return to port under its own power, even after sustaining major damage. Safety codes cover operations in polar waters, carriage of chemicals and specialised vessels like high-speed craft and mobile offshore drilling units. How ships are designed, built and loaded is crucial for safety at sea. There are markings on the side of a ship's hull, ensuring it's been loaded to a predefined safe depth, following the much amended and updated 1966 Load Lines Convention. Fundamentals of ship design, like internal subdivision, maintaining stability and watertight integrity, are covered in the codes adopted by the MSC. These cover ship stability both in normal state and if a ship should suffer damage. Fire prevention and extinction are covered in a special chapter of the SOLAS Convention to prevent fires from occurring. Materials such as carpets and wall coverings are strictly controlled. So in the event of a fire, it is rapidly detected, contained and extinguished. Easy evacuation routes for crew and passengers is another key element. In recent years, the goal-based construction standards for ships have followed the goal-based philosophy. The first goal-based construction standards for bulk carriers and tankers came into force in 2012. This approach encourages technical innovation to ensure the regulations can stand the test of time.
Although much of what the Maritime Safety Committee does is designed to prevent accidents at sea, if they do occur, there must be a reliable and comprehensive structure in place to deal with them. The Safety of Life at Sea Convention, SOLAS, enforces an age-old maritime tradition that ships will assist people in distress at sea. And in 1979, the Convention on Search and Rescue, SAR, SAR, was adopted to establish an international search and rescue plan. No matter where an accident occurs, the rescue will be coordinated by an official organization ashore, including the potential cooperation between neighboring organizations. Since 1999, under the Global Maritime Distress and Safety System, all ships above a certain size must carry specific satellite and terrestrial communication equipment for sending and receiving distress alerts and maritime safety information. All the life-saving and rescue equipment on board a ship is strictly regulated by IMO's Life-Saving Appliance Code. This covers what a ship must carry on board to requirements for testing, repair and maintenance. It has long been recognized that it is ships' crews and their support ashore who hold the key to safety within the industry. Professionalism and competence are vital to ensure safety standards and procedures are properly implemented to be really effective. IMO has established global standards for seafarer training and competence through the STCW Convention, ensuring that seafarers are trained to the same standards throughout the world. A similar measure has been developed specifically for crew aboard fishing vessels. IMO measures cover safety manning levels aboard ships, including hours of work, rest and fatigue. All of this can significantly affect seafarers' well-being and their ability to perform effectively and safely. Shoreside safety management structures within shipping companies are covered by the International Safety Management Code. The International Standard for Shoreside Management Structures in Shipping Companies for Safe Ship Operation. IMO and its Maritime Safety Committee develop and maintain all safety rules and regulations for international shipping. Member governments actually adopt these various measures. They are helped by industry bodies and other NGOs representing a wide range of interests from ship owners and operators to seafarers and environmentalists. The MSC addresses the wide range of subjects already covered plus maritime crime and security, fishing vessel safety with the lessons to be learned from individual accidents and incidents. And in the future, its workload will continue to be just as busy. Issues like cybersecurity and automation, and in particular, autonomous ships, are already on the agenda as IMO and the Maritime Safety Committee prepare to meet the challenges of the future. <laughs>